Uh, obviously, uh, like I told our guys, it's very disappointing when you come out uh, so close, uh, but it's not. We're not disappointed. I can't tell you how proud I am of. I say the seniors all the time, um, but how proud I am of all these guys and uh, you know all the different circumstances and, and all the things that have gone on, not just this year, but especially in the last probably month and a half and how these guys have handled it, how these guys have continued to move forward, how these guys have continued to take care of one another um, is what this game is really all about. And uh, it, <clears throat> tough. it hurts. Uh, every one of those guys in there hurt because they care so much and they've worked so hard and uh, sacrificed. And it is what it is. But, uh, we'll be better because of it. And we'll go ahead and open it up for questions for Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle, as well as uh, Desmond Ritter and Kobe Bryant. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function within Zoom. We'll call on people individually. And the first question comes from Charlie Goldsmith. And please be sure to uh, direct your question to an individual so they know who would, uh, is to answer. Luke, Charlie, in a lot of Luke, in a lot of ways, the game came down to that last offensive drive you had. Uh, one, why did you? Why were you snapping the ball with so much time on the clock? And two, uh, what went into the decision to throw on a third down? What was the first question? Uh, why were you snapping the ball with so much time on the clock? And why were you? What? I can't I hear what you said. Snapping the ball with so much time on the clock gave Georgia about 20 seconds, and two, throw on third down, giving Georgia 40 more seconds. Do we? Is that really? You serious? Like because we're going to play to win and we play to win and uh you know we do what we do um you know it wasn't like we wanted to throw the thing it was an opportunity it was, it was, there was three different options to it and, uh you know we're not going to go back wondering and trying to play the uh the wishing and wanting game um we're going to be aggressive we're going to go we're going to give our guys an opportunity uh you know there's a lot of different things that we do different when you go back high in sight but uh you know we're going to play to win Next question comes from Anthony Patterson. Hey, Coach Philco. Um, what a great game. Uh, crazy that, you know, you have to be on the losing end of it. But my question is, what what is the most important thing you take away from this team this season, um, even though you guys were able to come up short on the undefeated season? And what was the what was Georgia doing differently? Um, in the second half, or was it something more on you guys in that? that no, I, I think we'll, we'll always take away the commitment that these kids have had this year for this. Um, nobody that has – it's not a coach uh, that's not a part of your training or doctor staff uh, knows what everybody in this program and all the programs around the country have gone through this year. It's easy to sit back and watch and, and wish there were more people in the stands and things like that. But what these kids and these guys have gone through, these young men, um, what these coaches and what these doctors and everybody have gone through. It's, I don't think you'll ever forget uh, the sacrifices and, and the commitment to a lot of, from a lot of people. And uh, I think that I hope every one of our kids remembers that because um, this is what life is really about. And uh, you got to make sacrifices. you got to grow up, and, and no matter what the situation is. Just a reminder, if you have a question for Coach Fickle, Desmond Ritter, or Kobe Bryant, please be sure to use the raise hand function within Zoom. Uh, we'll call on people individually. The next person is Justin Williams. Uh, Des, Coach mentioned kind of the options on that last third and two play. Can you just go through kind of the call and what those options were and how you saw it unfold from from your perspective? Uh, yeah, so it was almost just a smash concept um, with Josh Wiley coming into the flat. Um, you know, we were expecting to get it to him quick. You know, it was only one, two yards that we had a gain. And uh, then their corner had jumped outside of it. Um, all the defense had pushed to our spot route at five yards, and then they cut Mike loose. Uh, the ball just didn't get the ball hung up in the air, what felt like for a, an eternity. But if that ball got up and down quicker, then it would have been a completion. Next question comes from Kelly Quinlan. Coach Fickle, I was curious. Uh, you had a couple of plays where you were in third and two and had some false starts on offense. Was there anything in particular you were seeing? Was it the shifts on the defensive line for Georgia that was causing issues or? Yeah, we, we've had, we've had some, we've had some issues this year with that. And, <clears throat> you know, when, when you're, when you're mixing guys around in there, um, you know, as, as the season's going to be, whether they're injuries or, or what's going on this entire year, um, those are those little things that uh, playing more and more, you got to clean up and, uh, it's happened to us, I think, late in the year just because of some layoffs and things like that. But that's no excuse. 
uh, they're shifting, they're moving, and people are going to do that. So we just got to, and we got to be better at those things. That's for sure. Next question comes from Chip Towers. Yeah, Coach Fickle, uh, great game and, and all that. Uh, how how big do you think, uh, how much of a factor do you think was the D, the DQ of your starting uh, left tackle in the first half? How much did that affect the game, you think? Absolutely ridiculous. And I, I to be honest, I don't know of any offensive linemen been thrown out of games this year. Um, but it's a part of the game. It happens. It's the year of the uh, teammate, and when one guy goes down, another guy's got to be able to step up. We, we not only had that, we had a, you know, we had a couple guys in the last few hours or even the last few days that couldn't make it as well. Thank you. Next question comes from Brandon Seho. Luke, we've talked about it, and you've mentioned it as a measuring stick. I know you didn't win the game, but you had the lead for all but three seconds of the game, and you went toe to toe with a top 10 team from the SEC team. Where do you think you measure up against the best of the best after that game? We're not there just yet. And uh, that's what uh, that's what keeps motivating you. And I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we're going to take from this that, that you know, that, that we know we can do. Um, but it also helps us, makes us hungrier to say, hey, you know, we know where we've got to get to. And, and there's a few other steps that uh, – that we still got to be able to take and, uh, you know, closing it and sealing it and, <clears throat> and those kinds of things are, are, are one of those steps. We have time for a few more minutes with uh, Coach Fickle, Kobe Bryant, and Desmond Ritter. Next question comes from Gary McKillops. Yeah, this one's for Kobe. Uh, Kobe, you had a great season overall, but uh, not with this loss. How, how do you put this in perspective? What do you think about the season overall? Uh, for it to be my last year, I had a ball. You know, I appreciate all my teammates. We were all together as one, my brothers. Uh, I, I just had a ball, you know, disappointed in the loss. Obviously, I wanted to win, but I wouldn't go to battle with nobody else besides my brothers. So I'm, I'm extremely grateful for them and Coach Fickle. Another question from Charlie Goldsmith. Desmond, can you just describe the emotion and the feeling and the anticipation of playing in this game? Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, it's been a wild little week we've had. Um, it's not been a normal bowl experience where we get to come down here for a week. Um, but instead, you know, we practice, uh, back home until Wednesday and then flew out here and had almost, you know, just a, a two day business trip. Um, like we like to say, so, you know, we've been, we've been ready to play this game for a long time. Um, it's just, you know, disappointing, obviously the way it ended. Question from Chad Brendel. Coach, quite a few guys out today. Uh, how proud are you guys? Or are you of these guys for stepping up and, you know, really not making it? You know, didn't miss a beat with uh, so many key guys missing. Words can't tell you. Um, and it's because of guys like these two right here that are leaders that, uh, you know, didn't bat an eye at, a, you know, James Wiggins or, or Ahmad or, or, or you know, um, Jared Dokes. Uh, these guys went right to the next guy. And, and you know, it's hard on some of those guys that just jumped in. Jerome Ford had to be thrown into to a lot more action. Um, but when you got a guys like Desmond Ritter that you can look at, you know, making calls and, and the guy that's kind of the energy to all that they do, um, I know it makes it a lot easier. And uh, they'll never know how proud that we really are about how they've handled um, a situation like that, like the entire year. But uh, that's what sends you away proud. Question from Neil Meyer. Um, this question is for Dez. Uh, could you just tell us what was going through your mind and what did you see on that 14-yard uh, touchdown to Josh Riley? You know, you bought as much time as you could to find him in the end. Could you just tell us what was running through your mind on that play? Like, what did you see to open that play up? A lot of time, like you said. Just a lot of time. And then keep my eyes downfield, trust my alignment, uh, and then, you know, just let playmakers make plays. Put the ball up. Let them go make a play. It wasn't a perfect ball. Josh Riley is one of our playmakers, and he made a play. 
Okay, time to, for just a couple more. We'll take uh, one more from Justin Williams and then one more from Gary McKillops. Coach, you mentioned playing to win on that third and two call. We've seen you go for it in some of those fourth down situations. Knowing that was the call going into that third down play, how much consideration was there on fourth down? There was. Um, you know, I, but again, you, you, you rely on your defense and, um, you know, so there's a lot of things that you go back and try to look at and say, hey, there's things you can do differently. Um, but uh, there, there was definitely a consideration. You know, I, I think that the difficult thing is, is as big as they are up front, no one and trying to get some of those are shorter yard situations. Um, I don't know that that was the greatest advantage for us. Uh, so we were going to put in our defensive hand, defense's hands um, and give them the opportunity to win the game for us. Okay, and final question comes from Gary McKillops. Okay, uh, Kobe, uh, just one more. The, uh, the, the fact that you came so close today, do you feel you guys can compete against any Power 5 school? Uh, absolutely. You know, we have the right coaches to prepare us, uh, the right mentality. So, absolutely, I have no doubt in that. He doesn't know what that means. We don't, we don't use that word that P and whatever that is, so that they, know, they know no difference. They know what the SEC really is. And it's a really, really good conference with really, really good teams and great players. But, um, you know, we don't, we don't look at anybody any different. Um, obviously, there's conferences that are, that are you know, historic and, and great. Um, and teams, I mean, Georgia, it doesn't matter what conference they were in. You know, it doesn't matter what P was in front of or after their, their name. That, that's a great football team, and uh, we love the challenge.